Hi, welcome to my basement. Normally I like to make videos where I document me building something. When I build something, I typically like to build something that I'm interested in and that I want but I can't really afford to get. The thing is, I really love learning about new things and exploring all the different things that exist out there and I get inspired buy something and want it, but if I bought everything that I wanted, I would very quickly, I'd have to be rich to do that. So um, this video is a video about something that inspired me a few years ago and that I've been building various versions of, and it's flutes. Um, the first thing that caught my eye was the Japanese shakuhachi. Uh, the other thing is I really like instruments, musical instruments, and I love learning about different cultures. So this is an example of something I did actually buy. Um, here is a, a shakuhachi that I bought from eBay. Um, it's a type that comes apart. Uh, it's a, got a traditional inlay in the mouthpiece and um, it's coated on the inside with a lacquer to try to tune it. And mine isn't in the greatest of shape, but normally these are in the thousands of dollars. Um, and I paid, I think, a little less than a hundred. Um, so it doesn't play as well as it could, but I can, I'm also planning on trying to fix that. This is what it sounds like. So I love the idea of a flute that's um, not blown this way, but blown this way. Um, and so, uh, let me show you real quick. Uh, this is a uh, long, PVC is a really cheap, fun, easy way to experiment in flute making. Um, this one's a really long version. One thing I love about this style of, I guess you can do this with any flute, I don't know. but. You can bend the notes by how much you cover the hole, or how much you move your mouth like this. Um, so that's one thing that really attracted to me to that type of flute. Here's one that I haven't finished yet that I plant. You know, this one can come apart. Um, So, like I was saying, I like uh, flutes that are end-blown rather than transverse flutes. And so that led me to learning about the ne, like N-E-Y. Um, and here is a mini one that I made out of PVC. This one comes apart. Uh, and um, it's supposed to be made out of like a cane or reed. I think that I read that it's made from the same reed that you make some like reeded instruments from. Anyway, it has uh, like nodes at certain points and so I tried to mimic that in the PVC by heating it up and then taking pliers and doing that. They're like kind of rounded pliers for jewelry. Um, the cool thing about the ne is the different ways you can play it. So, just a sec, let me get a little closer. It's just an open hole at the top, which I love the simplicity of. The same with uh, the top of a shakuhachi. It's quite simple, um, and it's in the top of it. Uh, in any case, this way of playing 
took me a very long time to learn. Um, first, I'm going to show you the Persian way. Uh, I think it it's the coolest way I can think of to play an instrument, and it produces a pretty unique sound. If you internet search for nay, N-E-Y, you'll come up with... You'll probably find the resources that I found. Uh, the way for a Persian nay, you play it by putting this edge in between your two front teeth. And then you put your top lip over it, and then you make this hissing noise. It's so unique. I mean, I think you kind of look like a dork, but it makes a cool sound. And um, so these are the spacing on the fingering, and there's one in the back um, here. Um, I also made a bigger one right here. Uh, let me play that one. I think it's. I practice. I play this one more, so it'll be easier. You can also move your cheek to give like a vibrato and also adjust the note. practice that much but you can also play uh, higher octaves you can also you can do that on a shakuhachi too but you blow harder um, so it takes a lot of practice to get your tongue to make that the right shape but the thing that I like so much about the ne is that it's from lots of different cultures. So that was like the Persian style of playing. In Turkey, I believe they put like a plastic part right here. Um, and I'm pretty sure they've they um, played them in Egypt and other parts of uh, the Middle East. But um, in other places you play it like this. So, uh, a normal way you make your mouth for a flute would be like that, making peas. But with this, you do like a whistle. Um, and then it sits here in the corner of your mouth. And you can bend the notes just like on the shakuhachi. Um, but uh, it's just so cool to me, the diversity of how you play it. Um, so that's the nay. Uh, one other instrument I'm going to have to move back to show you is the Fuyara, I think it's called. And it's uh, got a fipple, or it's like a whistle kind of thing up here, and then a pipe that you blow into. And then as you move along, there's holes down the length of it. And this is considered more of an overtone flute, but I just like the uniqueness of and the size of it. So all those notes come from the same, covering the same uh, hole. You may already know about all this, and I may be giving you information that you're like, that's not right. And if so, please uh, tell me in the comments. But uh, this is the best I can remember of what I learned. So I can't really play this one like a tune or anything, but um, it's just cool to me. And so 
to buy all of these professionally made would have been ridiculously expensive. So um, that's one thing I really try to do with my videos is be creative in make, coming up with ways to enjoy cultures and objects like flutes and um, stand-up paddle boards like I made a stand-up paddle board in some of my other videos um, that you normally couldn't because of the cost. And so um, you may think like, well, I'm just skimping, I'm just making it poorly by not spending money. But I'm really exploring way more things, cultural things, it's activities, than I could afford to by trying to come up with the least expensive way to do it. Um, and that's a fun use of my uh, creative mind. So, thanks for letting me show you these flutes. You know, I guess I want other people to feel free that if they're interested in stuff, that they can just try and make it, and they can even just make it cheaply and really have fun exploring what it is to make stuff and what it is to enjoy um, cultures and other things that you might not normally get to just because of the cost. And these days with the internet, you can really learn about almost everything. Um, so anyway, like I said, thanks for watching. Thanks for letting me show you this. Um, I hope you enjoy these videos. Okay. Ready? Yep. <laughs> that was a good grab. Do it again. <laughs> that was amazing! <laughs> that was so good.